Hey there, CU300. Welcome to week 15. Uh, if you're watching this, I hope that means that you were able to finish P3. You did it. Biggest project of the semester done and out of the way. Um, this week we're focusing on project four. That's a reflection that's not going to take one week, um, and we're going to pretty much wrap it all up in this video. So as you're watching, um, I'd recommend setting aside a solid 30 minutes or so to work through this video, to take some time to stop and brainstorm, and then come back to your ideas uh, and really start the drafting process now. So um, get your pen and paper ready, and uh, week 15. Here we go. Oh, I'm wearing my book nerd shirt today. Um, good news about in-laws is that they give you great presents when they figure out that you have an obsession. Um, enjoy. As promised, like I said, this week we are focusing on reflection. This one will be due at the end of the week. Instead of a Sunday assignment, you'll turn in this complete reflection then. One of the main reasons I like to focus on reflection in general uh, is because it helps us build this thinking process as a critical and active one. We think about reflection happen happening passively sometimes, but it's really something that we want to engage in, uh, and it's important now especially more than ever. Um, with the way that this semester has gone, there's so many things happening outside of the classroom that taking this reflective process seriously can really help you kind of solidify what you've learned and make sure that you can carry it forward with you. Um, unfortunately, um, when, when we're stressed out, we don't process things as well. So this being the last composition class that you'll likely take, I hope that you'll carry these skills with you into your major and that uh, this reflective process gives you some processing time to remember to think about what's been really important to you and what skills you'd like to carry on. Um, I'd encourage you to do this with your other classes too, even if it's taking a few minutes to journal or uh, go back through notes and highlight, um, and even things that are happening in your life right now. This is an historic time, and um, processing how you're feeling and what's going on can be really helpful too. For this, we're going to focus on CO300 though. Ultimately, you're going to produce a, 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 what's around a two to three page paper, 750 words to a thousand, uh, using author tags to attribute as you kind of include your sources from the semester, giving us context to show your growth and development. This assignment sheet and the rubric are list, are provided for you in the week, uh, pro, excuse me, in the project for module. Uh, you can find that page under modules. It should be the first link at the top, P4 coursework. Just to go through the rubric quickly, um, again, these are broken down rhetorically. Purpose and audience are the first category worth 25 points, making sure that you have a clear reflective purpose, that your goal is to demonstrate growth, to reflect, to illustrate your learning, um, as well as clear, um, clearly addressed to an audience of your peers. Rhetorical knowledge and analysis will come mainly in the body paragraphs, showing how you've managed to um, really embrace different rhetorical objectives throughout the semester, how you've grown, what you've done well, and how, you've, um, how you really demonstrate um, all these different things and why these are most important for you to continue to carry on with. Evidence, also 25 points. This is your ability to integrate evidence based on our different pieces from the semester. Um, you've got a lot of examples that you might choose to quote or paraphrase from, which we'll get into in a moment, um, but you have your projects, course notes, our syllabus, our in-class activities, um, a lot of good stuff to draw from, um, and hopefully you're using a variety of those types of evidence um, rather than just focusing on projects or just quoting from the syllabus or our homework or things like that. Organization and development is worth 15 points, so how well uh, you're, you paragraph things, how well you explain the ideas. Um, and last, which isn't on this slide, is styling convention worth 10 points. When we think about reflection, these terms are going to be really helpful for us. So first, like I mentioned with your evidence, intertextuality is an important concept for us in this project. Looking at the links between texts, showing how there is a connection between them, uh, is an important part of establishing how you've grown. What, it, what your writing looked like in P1 versus in P3 can show that relationship between those texts, illustrating that intertextual element. When we Ultimately, what we're performing right now is a meta-analysis. So if we break that word down, meta being about itself, analysis, um, kind of this critical process, a meta-analysis is kind of looking critically at the analysis itself. So 
Um, when we think about it, you might have heard, like, that's so meta. It's about the thing itself. We are analyzing our former analyses. Hopefully this is also a heuristic process. Um, when we think about heurist, uh, a, a heuristic approach, it's your ability to learn and discover something. So through looking at your work, I'm hoping that you're able to demonstrate how you're learning, what you're learning, and why it's important. If you haven't already, now would be a good time to pause and read Lamott and Lamott's text. This is from our raw textbook called Shitty First Drafts. Um, this project I realize we're doing in about a week, and I hope that while it may not be a shitty draft that you turn in, um, going through this process really does kind of force you to put something on paper that you're not going to be comfortable with at first. Eventually we polish it and we become prouder and prouder of it, um, but this is a great text that kind of illustrates the process that we've gone through in writing this semester. Um, Aunt Lamont gives a lot of examples, um, so I'm hoping as you read you're finding similarities, maybe points of disagreement as well, areas where you can push back, and um, when we think about reflective writing, I'd like you to be able to make connections between Lamont's ideas of drafting and how, um, why it's so important to start with a shitty first draft and revise and revise to make it better. How does that fit with our goals for reflection? If you'd like to go read that now, I'll give you some time. Um, hit play when you're ready. All right, so as we're thinking about the assignments, this is this reflective process will start now. Take a few minutes to brainstorm if you have a pen and paper handy or if you have an, uh, a Word document open. Think about the, th the greatest link that you've noticed between projects. Each project, what's the thing that you notice keeps cropping up? What, keep, what do we keep talking about? Similarly, what have you improved on? What was confusing maybe at the beginning that you feel comfortable with now? And last, what do you hope your work says about you? What do you, where, what elements of growth have you demonstrated and why does it make you stronger now? Again, take a few moments, go on when you're ready. Adding into that, as you've kind of uh, thought about some of these maybe rhetorical concepts or these common, pro uh, common themes, start to connect it to the major assignments. Start thinking about uh, what was most memorable, how you demonstrated these concepts throughout these different projects. Um, we've got a lot of homework assignments with those as well, things that we built into the editorial, things that we built into our uh, proposal and the advocacy campaign, our website. Um, think about what, uh, think about which, what the biggest connections are, what was most memorable to add to your brainstorming. Again, hit play when you're ready. I'm going to remind you about our course objectives next. So all of the things that we've done for these different projects go back to our course objectives, the kind of guidelines that we started the semester with. I have them here for you. And they're broken out down into five categories. So with each of these, um, you have one major goal, for instance, extend rhetorical knowledge, and a number of sub goals that come under that. Excuse me. Um, if you're following along in the PowerPoint, the next page will take you to a Google Doc. So go ahead and pull up that PowerPoint from our uh, from our course module and follow along with me. So in this document, I've broken out those five different objectives since they're all kind of grouped already. In this space, I'd like this to be an option for you to start to brainstorm and do some more collaborative uh, thinking. Um, I'm offering extra credit for this, so if you're interested in participating, you can get two points per comment, up to six points of extra credit this week. Um, for example, I have a comment here that should be like what you will do. Um, outlining how you develop some of these ideas, um, making sure that you include your name, um, a couple sentences should be enough. Uh, So I have all five concepts, uh, excuse me, all five objectives outlined throughout these different pages. If you continue to scroll, feel free to add your ideas here from your brainstorming to see how those fit into the course objectives that I've offered or that we've been working toward all semester. We'll go back to the PowerPoint. So from that Google Doc, uh, you can continue to brainstorm different objectives, how those relate to the different projects and the different things that were most memorable to you throughout the semester, building on some of this intertextuality and starting to perform some of that meta-analysis, why it's important, how you've put it all together. So this ends our brainstorming phase. 
Once you have an idea of what you'd like to present in your reflection, we'll kind of start, we'll begin drafting with this introduction. So if we think back to the rhetorical triangle, thinking about you as the author, the text as a reflection, us as the audience, your classmates, you and myself, we can think about our purpose as being either simply to reflect or thinking about building knowledge and thinking uh, to match it up with some of those claims. Claims of value, showing why this is important. Claim of policy, what you plan to move forward and how it can be implemented in your work. Um, and of course, this is all informed by the constraints and exigence. Why is this important? What constraints have we experienced this semester? Depending on your background in writing and how this transition has gone, you might have some very different contexts to present to help situate people in your introduction. Start with how you would think you might like to introduce your paper. Start drafting this introduction paragraph. Click play when you're ready. When we get to our body paragraphs, these are going to be built around most likely an objective or rhetorical concept. So from the brainstorming that you did with our course objectives, think about how all of these ideas come together, and which ones you'd might like to focus on most. I'm going to introduce this uh, paragraph structure, PI. It's an acronym, so we'll go through each letter to start constructing a body paragraph in a more traditional form of an essay. The point, or the first piece, is a topic sentence, introducing the main idea that, you're, that the entire paragraph is built around. So, uh, for us, the goal is to introduce, like I said, that course objective or rhetorical concept. An example might be, this semester has enhanced my ability to communicate with a specific audience. That tells us that this whole paragraph will focus on audience. Information is the second part of PI. Information is essentially our evidence, quoting and paraphrasing your work, demonstrating that intertextuality, and making sure that we attribute these with strong author tags. Since we're not going to have a traditional works cited page in this project, uh, you, you'll need strong author tags to introduce where the information comes from. I have an example here. If we go back to Rose from uh, the raw textbook, we know who Rose is. We know um, from we know that it's one of our course readings. So this simple author tag works for this project. If you're looking for a different kinds of evidence for brainstorming, think about all the different uh, assignments that we've done. If you go into Canvas and click Assignments, you have all of our different weeks worth of homework and then our new discussions and Sunday assignments to choose from. You might also look at the assignment sheets and look at the objective section on each of those. Those were all pulled from our course objectives. Again, kind of copy and pasting um, what each assignment aimed to help us accomplish. Throughout each lesson, I also start the PowerPoint with objectives, so you might go back to those as well. You've got a lot of different examples of where you might find evidence. If you're not sure how uh, about some specific examples, you might track those down now. Again, hit play when you're ready. As we think about author tags, think about uh, how you can introduce this information. The Writing Center gives us some important advice, and you have um, some examples on the following page as well. I'll let you read through these. The last part of Pi is explanation, so point, information, explanation. Explanation includes the analysis. It's a lot of the why and how, showing why it's meaningful, showing how it helped your growth, showing what's important for you and why. So um, as you introduce the, these different types of evidence, the meta-analysis really comes in the explanation. Um, this is where you can kind of describe the heuristics, showing the development and growth, explaining how and why these concepts have been important to you. My note here at the bottom, repeat IE, so you can introduce information and more explanation, more information, more explanation, or weave these all together in your body paragraph. That'll about do it for P4. I have a few notes for us so we can finish out the week and let you know kind of what's coming uh, as we wrap up the semester. This week, I'm going to go through your process work and drop the lowest score. Uh, this is outlined in the syllabus as one of the things that I do to help at the end of the semester. Uh, so you might see a rise in your process work grade. 
A reminder that P4 is worth 20% of the final grade. That's more than it was originally allotted for the, at the beginning of the semester due to the changes uh, that we've experienced. If you'd like to use your extension for this project, again, please email me by Saturday. Um, this would move your due date from Sunday to May 10th, uh, excuse me, from Sunday, May 10th to Wednesday the 13th. Remember that you also have the option this semester for satisfactory or unsatisfactory grading. Um, that all goes through your RAM web through the registrar. That's not something that I know. Um, depending on how this course is going for you or what your needs are for your GPA, you might choose to do satisfactory, unsatisfactory for this class as well, and I wanted to remind you of that. The last piece for us to wrap, to wrap up is course surveys. Course surveys are due on May 7th, that's Thursday of week 15, um, so please do be sure to get these in. Um, I've given you a screenshot of the Canvas page, you can see the course survey at the bottom in red. Um, I hope that these should take about 15-20 minutes maybe. They are a lot of short answer and I do really value your feedback. Um, if you're interested, I'd also encourage you to sign your name since the department values these evaluations more. Um, as a teacher, this is one of my best opportunities for professional development. Um, I get observed by my peers, my, by other teachers, um, but they come for a day. You all sit with me the whole semester and know exactly what my day-to-day -day looks like and what this class really means to you and your peers. Um, and I'm here for you, so I hope that this helps you in this transition, and I hope that um, I hope that you'll take some time to give me feedback to let me know um, how I might improve for future semesters. I teach this course about every semester and I want to continue to improve. Um, like just like in peer review, I'd ask that you give me critical feedback and complimentary feedback so that I can change the things that aren't working and make everything better uh, or and continue doing the things that are going well for you. Without that, I get stuck in a lot of ruts and just do the same thing that I've done previously. So I'd encourage you to do the survey, um, not for just for this class, but for your other classes as well. Thanks in advance. I'd also like your permission to use your work. While this is totally optional, um, I do like to refresh my different samples and uh, swap in new work. Um, if you're interested in letting me use your work, please follow the link in the PowerPoint to the Google survey. Um, this will let you put in your name, your course information, and choose a pseudonym. Uh, you'll notice, uh, may, you might have noticed throughout the semester that we read papers by Hermione Granger and Batman. Um, I didn't teach them, but uh, those are former students whose identity I'm protecting. So you have full reign to choose whichever nickname or fake name you would like, um, and I'll use that instead. So click the Google form if you're interested in giving me your work for future semesters. Um, it will be distributed anonymously with that uh, moniker. And I think that wraps it up for this week. Um, your discussion post is based on just one single prompt. I'd like you to start drafting. Um, which, rhetor which rhetorical concept was most meaningful to you and how does your work reflect it? So tell me the objective, give me an example of when you used it, and for Friday, please respond to three peers. Um, I'm not giving you word gu guidelines this week. Um, for your prompt on Wednesday, I'd like you to give an example and then see a lot of other examples that you can contribute to on Friday. Are these ones that you thought of? Can you make other connections for your peers? Can you give them another assignment where you saw that course objective being used? Uh, these different uh, these different prompts should help you help you draft and construct your work. Since this final assignment is due on Sunday, there are no Sunday assignments, uh, and I won't re I won't provide inline feedback on these since this is the last one, and I'll be uh, sending these in pretty close to the grading deadline to submit final grades for you. So you will all just receive a rubric with this assignment. Last but not least, um, while I might do a larger goodbye video next week, um, I wanted to say thank you for a wonderful semester. Um, it has been one of the weirdest, and I really appreciate those of you who have checked in and um, that all the work that you all have done. Um, it's more than we could have asked for you, so I hope that you feel as proud as my dear dogs do in their fancy bow ties, um, and that you have a good summer, that you're safe, um, and that when we get back to the fall, you might stop by once, of course, you're well rested, once you've gotten a chance to be weird and, like, leave the house. So I hope that all is well. And I really do thank you for hanging in there with me this semester. 
um, I'll see you all soon. Take care. Be safe. Don't let me hear about you on the news. And, uh, 